Thank you for coming. I'm Jamie Hamrick, and I'm one of the pastors here at uh, Rocky Mount. And it's been a weird experience this Lenten season. You know, I, I think this is the lenniest Lent I've ever Lented. And uh, it's, been a, it's been a different time. But God is still good, and God is still working in so many ways. I do want to give you a couple of updates of things that are going on here at the church. Uh, as you know, this coming Thursday is Holy Thursday. And we're going to celebrate in worship together live at 7 p.m. Pastor G and I are going to join you. And uh, we would love for you to tune in. So put that on your calendar. Uh, this Thursday at 7 o'clock. Another thing is this. Thank you so much for signing up for online giving. Just in the last two weeks, over 70 families have signed up for it. And it is such a blessing that the church is, is able to be stable and the church is able to do what it's supposed to do in the community and for the kingdom. So we are so glad that uh, you're doing that. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, before we go into our worship this morning, uh, I would love to lead us in prayer. Let's pray. Our Lord and our God, uh, 
These are trying times in the world that we live in. But I thank you that you're still on the throne and you are still the physician of all physicians. God, our, our country and our world needs healing. Whether it be healing mentally or physically or spiritually. God, we ask that your Holy Spirit take control. God, and direct us. God, I ask that you guide and direct all the legislative bodies to direct all the companies to watch over our government, our president. Um, God, just please be the one in control. We need you, Lord. And God, we are asking for forgiveness. We are a sinning people. And we thank you, Lord, that there's something called grace that you have given in so many ways in our life. God, we're going to worship you now, and we pray that you receive this and are blessed by it. We love you. We praise you in Christ's name. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm so glad to be here. I'm so glad that we have the opportunity and the blessing that we can, we can share this time and share this community even though we can't be together physically. I can't tell you how much it means to, to have seen you and your children all over social media watching and worshiping. And I just thank you so much for continuing to be a part of our community, even though we can't be together. So let's raise a hallelujah together. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah.
From the darkness I called your name Into darkness your mercy came You called me out, lifted me up How great is your love You bore my weakness, you took my shame Bury my burdens in fields of grace You called me out, lifted me up How great is your love From the heights of heaven You stepped down to earth In a sad perfection
Sometimes in our lives We all have pain We all have sorrow If we are wise We know that there's Always tomorrow Lean on me When you're not strong Just a call on me, brother, when you need a hand. We all need somebody to lean on. I just might have a problem that you'd understand. We all need somebody to lean on. Lean on me when you're not strong. We just thank you so much for this, uh, this opportunity to be together, maybe not in person, but uh, just where you are. We, we know, Lord, that uh, you meet us uh, where we are and in these tough times. We just, um, we just ask you to, to be with, uh, with everyone, whatever they're going through, whether it be boredom uh, or sickness, uh, just bring our families together. Uh, Lord, we ask these things uh, in your name. You taught us to pray. Uh, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We live in times that are very different. It almost seems like we've, we've lost hope. All we hear is negativity. All we see is the glass half empty. And I don't think God wants that for all of us. I think God wants us to look into the Alpha and the Omega. And today I want to talk about the day that hope rode into town. That's what Palm Sunday is all about. Jesus riding in that that triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Now, people really didn't understand why he was riding into town. They didn't understand the significance. But Jesus was a symbol of hope. And not only is he a symbol, Jesus is hope. Our scripture this morning is from John chapter 12, and we're going to look at verses 12 through 16. And in just a moment, we're going to look into Psalm 33, verse 22. So if you have your Bibles with you, open them up or read along with me there on the screen. But John chapter 12, verses 12 through 16. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king of Israel. Now Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it as it is written. Do not be afraid, daughter Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first, his disciples didn't understand all of this. 
Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that these things had to be done to him. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you for this day and I thank you for your word. May the words that come out of my mouth glorify you and only you. May they go into the homes and the souls of those that listen. God, help us to worship you today and to understand where our hope lies. In Christ's name, amen. You know what? Um, in Psalm 33, verse 22, I like this scripture. It says, May your unfailing love be with us, Lord, even as we put our hope in you. I think that's the problem. Are we really putting our hope in God? How in the world do I remain hopeful in a hopeless world? How do I remain hopeful when I turn on the news and everything is sad and bad? Whether it's through sickness or, or death or the economy, it's bad news. So how do I remain positive? And I want to ask you the question today, where are you putting your hope? You know, hope is where we put our dreams, our expectations, our, our futures. And many times we put it in people. And sometimes we put it in things. And then we have this thing called hopelessness. When what we put our hope into, what we leaned it against, fails. You know, it's a natural tendency when uh, we we're born to put all of our hope into our parents. And that's just what we do. That's who we are. They're, they're our providers. They're the ones that, that love us and take care of us. But then as we go along in life, Around the ages 12, 14, 15, we start to put our trust in something else because now we believe that our parents don't know anything. We start to put our trust and our faith in ourselves because when you become 13 and 14, you're very wise and you know all things. I wonder if we ever fail doing that. I wonder if we ever realize that we can't put all of our trust in our parents. And I know now I can't put all my trust in myself. Um, you know, hope is, is like a ladder. It, it's a ladder. And, and what, we put our, what we put our ladder upon is, is our hope. I want to ask you today, if this ladder represents hope, what's it leaned up against in your life? Where are you putting your hope at? Is it in someone or is it in something? You know, we never think about where we've got our ladder until that ladder, that hope, that what we're leaning on starts to dissipate. When it starts to, to go away, when our dreams start to fall apart or our businesses close or somebody gets sick. We, we put our hope in all these different things. And, and I truly believe that Satan puts us up to that, wants us to put our hope in other things. And, and provide so many things to put hope into. You know, in, in Scripture, all throughout Scripture, it talks about having faith in God. That's where you put your hope. But why in the world do we put our hope in people? Why do we put our hope in ourselves? You know, we put our hope in our own kids. Well, I'm putting my, all my hope into my kid's right arm because that's going to give him a free education. Or... I'm going to put all my hope in how he or she swings a bat or a club. I, I, that's where our, all our hope is until the ACL or MCL pops or the Achilles tendon or rotator cuff surgery or elbow goes out or too many concussions. We put our hope in a lot of different things, and that's not what God intended for us. Some of us put our hope in our minds, in our education. Some people put all their hope in their trust in drugs. Some people put all their hope in their physical body and their exercise. Some people bet everything they have on themselves that they're not going to fall. And we lean that ladder in the wrong places. Yeah, it might be steady now, but I promise you, if it's not the Alpha and the Omega, it's going to fall and you're going to fail and it's going to hurt. Why in the world do we put our hope in things that are going to fall? You know, people think this virus started two months, three months ago. No, folks, the real virus began thousands of years ago in a garden. 
named Eden. Now this garden was where sin came about when humanity made a choice to go against God. And that virus has sickened the world. And in fact, we're all infected with it. We're all infected with this sinfulness. And because of that, we are going to fail. And this world is going to fail. Yeah, you may think it's strong right now, but that infrastructure is going to quickly fall apart. You know, sometimes people think they can put all their hope in their money. Well, how's that working out for us right now? You know, what if we put all of our hope in the stock market because it is the strongest economy in the history of the world right now? The country's doing so great, low unemployment. Well, if you had all your hope and leaned everything you had in that, st that strong stock market, you've lost about a third of your hope just in the last two weeks. Now, other people, they, they like to put their hope in wonderful people, and it's good to have trust in people. That's, that's not the issue. But when you put all your trust into people or ideals, you can't put your hope in Mother Teresa. She passed away. You can't put your hope in a politician. Even though Ronald Reagan was probably the best of the best, he still passed away. We put our hope in, in the wrong things. That's why control freaks are always so frustrated. Because the world is... It's not going to cooperate. You, you can't put your control, that being your hope, you can't make that because you're going to fail and you're going to fall and you're going to get frustrated because nothing's going to go the way that you want it to go. In Romans, Romans chapter 8, verses 38 and 39, it says this, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, Neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Folks, I want to challenge you to lean your ladders on the kingdom. Lean them on something real. Lean your ladder on the forgiveness and the grace and the Savior of an almighty and loving God. Don't put your hope into a donkey or an elephant or a fox or a peacock or a little young lady up on the hill that's talking like this all the time and stomping around and saying, we've got to do this and we've got to do that. Don't put your hope in an orange man living in a white house. They may be good people. They may have great ideas but they're human and they're things and they're going to fail. If you want to put your hope in something, put it in the lion, put it in the lamb. That's going to be strong. That's going to be forever. That's going to be our only hope. You know what? Um, we're called to be hope dealers in the world that's going to have an unhappy ending. Are you dealing hope? Are you telling others what to lean into? Are you asking others to trust? You know, it may be hopeless a lot of ways in this world because there is no hope for this world, but there is hope and his name is Jesus. So I wanna call you to love even when you're not being loved. I wanna call you to sacrifice even when you think it's not gonna make a difference. I want to ask you to do your best. I want to ask you to serve. But most importantly, I want to ask you to put all of your hope in Jesus Christ. Why? Because he loves you. Amen. Lean on me when you're not strong.
that you were blessed today. We hope you felt God's presence. But most importantly, I hope you realize that we do have hope. His name is Jesus Christ. I want to thank you for joining us. I want to thank for all these servants that, uh, that came out and, and worked and social distanced, um, did everything by the book, but they did it for the kingdom. They did it for you. So if you talk to one of our, our folks, uh, make sure you thank them for what they're doing and how they're sacrificing uh, their time and sometimes even putting themselves um, in, in health in terms of danger. Also, make sure that you're thanking all of um, our, our workers out in the field, whether it be paramedics or firemen or doctors or policemen, nurses. There are so many people that are uh, doing a lot for us in life, and we've got a, a lot to be thankful for. May the God of grace, the God of mercy, and the God that is your firm foundation and will never fall, and will make sure that you don't either. May God be with you now and forevermore. And all God's people, start typing, said, Amen. Have a great week.